What's going on, YouTube? Now, Americans have long loved the Outback, so when Subaru introduced the three-row Ascent, it wasn't a surprise that it has been very successful. They actually had trouble keeping up with demand all through the 2019 model year. And now today, we are all ready with the 2020 version. Of course, we do want to take a moment to specially thank our friends at Quantrail Subaru for giving us access to this 2020 Ascent. And if you're in the market for any new Subaru, make sure to stop by their dealership or visit them via their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with that all said, let's see how the Ascent stacks up against the competition. So getting started with the exterior styling, even though the Ascent is larger than any Subaru before it, it still looks like a Subaru. It shares very similar cues to other models, but stuff like the grille has been beefed up to make it look a bit tougher. The headlights also have a recognizable design, especially if you choose the Limited or Touring, which come with these full LED lights and the LED fog lights at the bottom. The base and premium models don't have fog lights and instead come with halogen headlights. Moving on from the front, the rest of the design follows the same pattern of making the styling look bulky and more outdoorsy than the average class entry. You have two chunky taillights, which are partially LED, connected by a chrome strip. And then at the bottom, all models have dual exhaust outlets that really set off the design. And while we're down here, I will go ahead and mention the tow rating of 5,000 pounds on all but the base trim, which can only handle 2,000. But anyways, the design of the Ascent is overall conservative, but still handsome looking, just like most of Subaru's other products. Now turning our attention to the wheels, most of the trim levels do come with different designs. We have the largest option, the 20 inch gray contrast alloys, which come standard on limited and touring, and can also be optioned onto the premium via the sporty package. Normally the premium and base model come with 18 inch alloys, either with or without black contrast inserts. Heading on up to the mirrors, there are three possible combinations. Black on the base model, body colored on the middle trims, and the top touring gets satin silver ones. All but the base model do also get blind spot monitoring. Finally, last but certainly not least, we have loads of advanced safety features standard on every ascent. The EyeSight Safety Suite includes automatic pre-collision braking, adaptive cruise control, and lane keeping assist. Plus, you also have auto high beam headlights and reverse automatic braking on the Limited and Touring. This altogether makes it one of the most comprehensive suites in the class. But anyways, that's it for the outside. So now let's go ahead and hop inside the cabin. So only the top two trims of the Subaru Ascent will come standard with their smart entry system, as well as this really nice solid feeling key fob. Now you cannot remote start from the fob itself, but you can via the Subaru Starlink app, and that's gonna be free for one year. Now as far as getting inside the vehicle itself, there is a sensor behind the handle, so all you have to do is grab it. All right, so taking a peek inside the 2020 Ascent. Um, as you can tell right off the bat, it does share, the, of course, the same design language as last year since it was all new. Now, like most other Subaru models, they do keep it very simple when it comes to interior material and color combinations. So what you're looking at is your bottom two trims, which is base and premium. They're gonna come with cloth seating, and then your upper two trims are gonna come with real leather. And as far as your color options, uh, you, most of the trims only have two. It's just going to be either this ebony or the warm ivory option. However, if you go for the touring, you do have the exclusive option of Java Brown, um, and that's also the only trim that will get wood accents. 
Now turning over here to your door trim, it is very nicely finished. Um, you've got a lot of contrasting materials which look really nice. So you've got the leather down here on the armrest with the light colored stitching, the perforated leather in the middle, and then a lighter color uh, leather through here with a different color stitching. As far as your memory seats, they are two person on the limited and the touring only. And then our front two windows are one touch automatic. Heading down here to the seat, um, you will find a power seat on all but the very base model, which is six-way manual. Uh, the premium is eight-way power, and this is a 10-way power adjusting seat with the power lumbar. Um, we also have manual thigh extension as well. And then like I already mentioned, this is real leather. Um, and just like the door trim, it's very, very nice looking. Got a lot of intricate details here with uh, different types of perforation, different stitching designs, so it looks and feels very attractive. So the inside of the Subaru Ascent is pretty similar to the other Subaru models. Um, however, there are some unique touches that make this a little bit more premium. Now across the upper dash, you've got a soft touch plastic with a nice stitchy detail through it. Um, but down here in the middle, unlike most other Subaru models, we have a nice leatherette strip. This is color contrast and it feels very nice. And as far as your lower areas, these are hard touch. Um, but in the typical Subaru fashion, everything does fit together extremely solidly with no panel gaps or anything like that. Now on your limited and touring ascent, press the button to start. When you do, you will find this 8 inch display fire up on all but the very base model which has a 6.5 inch one instead. Now checking out the gauges here, these are the typical Subaru gauges. Um, so you've got two analog gauges and then a 4.2 inch multifunction display in the middle. Now this does contain some information, um, but not, it's basically just containing the driving information. However, the other information that some automakers include in here, Subaru actually uniquely includes in a separate six and a half inch display up here on the top of the dash. Now you control this display with these buttons here. Um, and I'll zoom in on it real fast. Um, but as you can see, it's got a ton of different information. Um, some basic stuff uh, like your um, uh, trip information, um, but you do have some more advanced things like your weather as well as different things like your percent of acceleration. So it's definitely a very handy uh, accessory screen to have. Now coming back to the steering, of course it is electric power assisted. Um, it is also leather wrapped on all but the very base model. As far as your buttons here, these are for your audio, uh, voice controls, and your phone. And then on this side is for your standard adaptive cruise control. And then we also have the heated steering wheel which comes on the limited and the touring. But as far as the steering wheel itself, it is manual tilt and telescoping across all the trims. All right, so moving on to interior storage. This is certainly one of the most important aspects of a family crossover. Um, and the Ascent does have what I consider to be a class typical amount. So starting out with our center console here, we can just lift this up. Um, as you can see, the first thing we've got is a removable tray. Um, but uh, once inside this actual bin, it is very, very deep. Um, and they nicely felt line the entire thing from top to bottom, which is usually something that only luxury automakers do. In front of that, we've got two uh, ambient lit cup holders right here. And then up in front of that, we have another really large bin. Uh, this is definitely a great place to stick a cell phone. And then way back there, there is a 12 volt outlet. And up in the front of that, you've got your two charging USB ports as well as an aux jack. Now, a lot of you guys will appreciate that um, Subaru has given you this much space and still kept a traditional shifter. So all you gotta do is just pull back for drive, bump over to the left for a manual shifting mode. Um, and you do actually have paddle shifter standard across the board. Um, you've got eight simulated gears, even though this is a continuously variable transmission.
sliding into reverse, of course, as you'd expect, we do have a standard backup camera. And Subaru has also nicely included active trajectory. Um, we have rear cross traffic alert as well as parking sensors here on this limited model. Um, and then if you went for the Touring, you would also have a 180 degree front camera system as well. Then back behind the shifter, we do have an electronic parking brake as well as a brake hold feature right here. Now, next to that, we have a button labeled X mode. This is the off-road mode for the Ascent. It does come standard on every single model. Um, basically, uh, it just takes all the different systems of the vehicle and just amplifies them and makes them specifically tuned for off-road use. Now, next up, we have the climate controls. We do have standard three-zone automatic controls across every single trim. Uh, and in typical Subaru fashion, they keep things very simple here as well. So you've just got two big knobs for adjusting your temperature, one right here in the middle for your fan speed, and then all your other buttons are represented physically so you don't have to dig around in the display or anything like that. As far as the seats, um, we do have three-stage heated seats on all but the very base model, but you're gonna have to go for the loaded touring if you want seat ventilation. All right, and now that brings us up here to our audio system. Now, all trims besides for the Touring come standard with a six-speaker audio system. However, even this limited model, we have popular package 23, and that throws in the Harman Kardon sound system that's usually reserved for just the Touring. That has 792 watts and 14 speakers. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Sound quality of this system is superb. All right, so that brings us here to our Subaru Starlink system. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. So this of course is the usual Starlink system. It is the same as it is in other Subaru models. Um, so you do have two different home buttons, one physically and one virtually, as well as some shortcut buttons down here on the bottom. Um, you will also notice um, that all the models come standard with both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, um, so you can use that instead of the Starlink system if you prefer. Now this specific Limited also comes equipped with navigation, that's part of that um, option package 23, um, but normally only the Touring would come standard with the navigation system. But anyways, that's just a brief little introduction to the um, different features of the Starlink system. But of course, we do have a dedicated tech help video available if you want to learn more about it. A link to that video is in the description. Now jumping on up here to your mirror, most of the models do come standard with this auto dimming home link universal remote mirror. Um, and we do also have a compass built in as well. Hang on up a little bit more. Uh, if you press this down, you will find a sunglass holder. But if you let it go back up partially, um, it is also a conversation mirror or a mirror that you can spy on your kids with. Now, as you can see, we actually have the panoramic moonroof. That does not come standard on the Limited. It comes standard on the Touring only. Um, but this was part of that uh, popular package that we added um, to this model. Now, as you can see, the front portion does open up just like a traditional moonroof. And you do also have a windscreen as well. But overall, there's really a lot to like with the cabin of the Subaru Ascent. Um, just like most Subarus, they really they keep things simple. Um, you know, so you don't have a bunch of complicated, gimmicky type things. Uh, they just hit all of the things that families want. Now what you'll notice right here is actually our only interior change for 2020 and that's that we now have a rear seat reminder that's standard across all four of the trim levels.
So that's pretty much it for the up and the front. So now I'll hand it off to Mason who will finish up the rest of the cabin. Heading around to the 2020 Subaru Sense rear seat, you are going to find a very class competitive amount of space. So you're going to find 39 inches of rear leg room and 40 inches of rear headroom, which does place it right on par with the Toyota Highlander and Honda Pilot. And that is plenty of space for any of your family members. Now turning over here to the door trim, uh, you are going to find a very nicely appointed one. It's honestly nicer than the front one. So you do have a nicely leather wrapped armrest all through here. It is padded leather above that and you do have some nice color contrast leather here. Additionally, you do have a power window. It is not automatic. And you do have another cup holder, another cup holder down here, and some more storage. Now turning over to the seats themselves, you will notice that this model does have the captain's chairs. This is a no cost option on the premium trims and up above. And you, like I said, you can have the bench seating if you want that. Now the seat itself is a beautiful design, so you do have nicely lit wrapping, and it is very, very comfortable. It does also slide and recline as well. Now here in the center, Subaru definitely has made the family happy because there are tons of features back here. All but the very base model will have their own climate controls and you can adjust your fan speeds and, and temperature right here. And down below that you will also notice that this model has the heated rear seats and that is standard on the limited and touring trims. Now down below that, uh, to keep everyone's phone charged up, you do have two smart charging USB ports. And further below that, you do even have two pop-out cup holders as well as some storage space back here. Like I said, we do have the captain chairs on this model. And up on the roof, you will notice this beautiful panoramic moonroof. It covers, it goes almost past the second row seat, so it really helps to air out the cabin back here. And you already have a lot of headroom. And off to the left side, you have some LED lighting, your, uh, your vent, as well as an assist grip and a coat hook. Now, like I said, this is right on par with the main competitors in terms of space. So behind your seating position, I have about probably eight inches of rear leg room and my feet definitely do not have any issues uh, sliding up under the seat. So people who are in the second row are definitely gonna be comfortable. I do also want to point out, it looks like I failed to mention that this limited trim and the touring have the uh, manual rear window sunshade. Now in order to get back into the third row seats, uh, Subaru has made it really easy. So all you have to do is look at this little lever, pick it up, and it does slide right out of the way. Now looking back here, you will notice another class competitive amount of space. You'll find 32 inches of rear leg room and 36 inches of rear head room, which is class competitive with the main uh, competition. So heading back here, let's see what it's like. So my first impression is actually very good. Um, with the seat scooted all the way back, uh, I still have about one inch of leg room, which is very impressive. Very few vehicles give you that. And my feet have tons of room. Uh, as you can see, I can even move them up and down. There's plenty of space. Um, and in addition to that, I have good thigh support. So this really isn't much of a downgrade from the second row. I'm actually very, very comfortable back here. Now turning over, you do have some more cup holders. Uh, Subaru has actually said that there is 19 total cup holders, so there is plenty back here. And in addition to that, on both sides you have two smart charging USB ports and a little storage cubby. Up top, Subaru has also given you a vent and a light. So overall, this is a very, very nice place to spend time. I'm very impressed with this third row seat. And in order to get the seat back into place, just pull it. Heading around to the tailgate of the Ascent, it has power on the limited terrain trims, so just locate the button under the lid and push it to open. Now when you do, you will find another large amount of space. 
This one actually bests the Toyota Highlander and Honda Pilot. So you're going to find 18 cubic feet behind the third row seats. If you fold them, you're going to get 48 cubic feet. And if you fold all of the seats, you're going to have a maximum of 87 cubic feet. So like I said, that is larger than the, major, the main Japanese rivals, such as the Honda Pilot and Toyota Highlander. And that space is definitely going to be appreciated for most families. Now off to the side, Subaru does finish it very nicely, so you do have a nice light here, as well as a 12-volt power outlet. And if you want to actually fold these seats, it's a pretty simple uh, process here. So all you have to do is look at this little strap here and push forward. Now obviously we do have the headrest extended, so that does need to come down first. Um, but folding, like I said, is very easy. Now underneath of the floor, Subaru does also give you a little bit more space. So you do have probably 8 to 10 inches deep of space here across the entire floor as well as a good spot to put the cargo cover when not in use. Now over here at the passenger seat, it is four-way power on the top two trims. And in addition to having nice materials in front of the passenger, you do have some storage right here, as well as a good sized glove box, and it is nicely felt lined. Up top, we have a sun visor with lights and a mirror. It does also detach and extend. Well guys, that sums up all the practical stuff about the Ascent. So now let's go ahead and get on the road and see how it performs there. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the powertrain information. Um, now for this ascent, Subaru does keep it very simple. You've got just one version across the board, um, and that's going to be their brand new turbocharged Boxer 4 engine. Um, so it is a four-cylinder, uh, and that makes 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. Power is routed exclusively through a continuously variable transmission, and like I already mentioned earlier in the review, you have eight simulated gears that you can switch between with the standard paddle shifters. Now, of course, as with every single Subaru, symmetrical all-wheel drive is standard equipment, um, and like I mentioned, that does uh, produce, since there's only one version, we just have two different fuel economies, one for the lower end trims with the smaller wheels, that's going to be 21, 27, 23 combined. And then if you go for the top trims with the bigger rims, that's 20 city, 26 highway, 22 combined. Um, but anyways, that uh, pretty much is the specs. So let's go ahead and take it on the road and see how it performs there. So initially taking off in the 2020 Ascent. It's actually the first time that I've driven the Ascent. We did review it last year, but it was a, uh, a pre-production model um, and we weren't allowed to drive it. So this is um, new for us to yeah. check this out. Um, but definitely the initial acceleration, very impressed by that. Um, like a lot of Subarus, the throttle response is tuned to be pretty aggressive. and. Um, because of that, it, it really feels surprisingly fast off the line. Now, once you get going, of course, you know, you can feel it, you know, drop off just a little bit. This is not going to be a super exhilarating vehicle. It's a, it's a family crossover after all, but, um, you know, initially the, uh, the acceleration feels definitely right in line with the V6 competitors. It definitely uh, gets going pretty well from the start. Yeah, another thing I'm noticing um, is the shift simulation. In a lot of other Subaru models, they don't really, they either don't have it or it's not as um, noticeable. 
but you can definitely notice it a lot more here in the ascent. Um, so it's not just like uh, simulating the shifts basically in certain situations, but it seems to be simulating the shifts most of the time. And it's to the point that I think that the average person might not really notice too much of a difference. Um, you know, and that's a good thing. You know, CVT, they're just, you know, it's, it's basically for fuel economy. So, you know, they're just trying to minimize its effects. Um, and if the average consumer can't notice, then, you know, then you get the benefit. That's right. This is a family crossover. After all, a lot of the competition does have CVTs. Not all of it. Um, but like you're saying, it really, it's not a very noticeable thing especially here in a family vehicle because most people are going to be driving around like I am right now just kind of cruising around light acceleration um, and under these circumstances it's really uh, just goes under the radar Yeah, this Turbo 4, it feels really good. You know, it, I don't feel really much like turbo lag or anything, because you know sometimes you you have to wonder a CVT and also a turbo engine if we're going to have kind of a laggy experience. But, yeah. um, you know, overall it really feels quite good, even, you know, kind of giving an acceleration while we're already moving, stuff like that. It feels good in a lot of different situations. I'm definitely impressed. And of course, there's the fact that this engine is um, going to be in the out, the new Outback here soon, and uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be in a smaller vehicle. So yeah. it's going to be really cool to kind of see it apply there. Now, stopped at this red light would be a good time to mention that there is not auto start stop on this car. The only Subaru that has it right now is the Forester. Um, so whether or not you care about that, some people uh, a lot of the competition will have auto yeah. start stop, especially the newer offerings. But um, once again, if the fuel economy is there, there's really no need for auto start stop. Yeah, the uh, throttle response might actually require a little getting used to. It is, um, you know, it is very sensitive. Uh, I've noticed that in a lot of other Subarus, they do have that. Um, I get, I guess, it's on purpose to, uh, you know, make it feel more responsive. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's sensitive, so you will have to get used to kind of taking off with uh, a lighter touch than what you would think for a big crossover like this. But just riding around here in this family crossover, I do want to mention how comfortable it is. You know, Subaru has definitely put, you know, comfort over like driving dynamics or something, which is what a lot of people want in here. You know, it is so comfortable in here. You know, just riding around, it's extremely quiet. These seats are extremely comfortable. Um, and really, there's just a lot of room in here for you and all of your family's belongings. And it really just nails that mission of you know, the core mission of keeping the family uh, comfortable and happy. Now, like Mason said, this is definitely family and luxury oriented, um, but that's not to say that it's sloppy or anything like that. On um, the steering, uh, feels pretty good. It is, of course, lightweight and electric power assisted. Um, but it does have enough heft that you can tell tell where everything is, um, you know, where the wheels are placed and everything like that. Now it does, uh, going around corners and stuff, it does roll quite yeah. a bit. Um, you know, it is just, it's a softly sprung. You, you will uh, notice the, or reap the benefits of that softness in uh, just driving Comfort down the road. Yeah. and not driving in dynamics. Exactly. 99% of the driving that this car will do, um, you'll be reaping the rewards of that. But overall, just like most Subaru models, um, 
the, the, the Ascent knows what it wants to be and it totally accomplishes that. You know, Subaru, they do things their way and uh, they have a you know, very unique and very successful formula of keeping things simple. They don't complicate things too much and they make sure that they, um, you know, hit all of the important aspects of a family crossover and they've definitely done that here with the 2020 Ascent. So now let's go ahead and discuss the pricing for this 2020 Subaru Ascent. So for the very base model, you're going to start at $31,995. Now if you want to go up to the premium trim, that's going to be $34,395. The limited, which is what we have here, is $39,345. And the touring model, uh, which is the top end model with all the features, has starts at $45,045. Now that is worth noting that that's about a between a $200 and $300 increase across all of the trim levels uh, besides for the very base model uh, for 2020. Now as far as how this particular Ascent is equipped, even though we do have the second from base model, we have quite a bit of optional equipment tacked onto that. Uh, so we do have the option package 23 uh, for $29.50 and we also have the popular package uh, number 3 for $902. Now, in addition to that, we also have USB charging ports for the third row for $230, uh, LED lighting upgrades for $185, and splash guards for $168. And finally, when you add in the destination charge of $1,010, this particular model as equipped comes in at $44,790, uh, which I will admit is, you know, that's a good price point for this class of vehicle. Um, it's right in line with a lot of the competitors, if not a little bit less than some of the main rivals. Well guys, hope you enjoyed watching one of the first in-depth looks at the 2020 Subaru Ascent Limited. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.